Part A asks us what forces act on the horizontal wire, and under what condition is the wire to move upward at constant velocity? Let's begin with the first part of that question. We have this conductor horizontally oriented right here. We can draw a very simple free body diagram showing the forces that are acting on the conductor. Now, of course, we have the downward gravitational force, which we can symbolize as mg. But in order for this object to move at a constant velocity, there has to be another force to oppose that. So in other words, there must be some upward force that has a magnitude exactly equal to mg. But the question is, what is that force? Well, of course, we know that there is a uniform magnetic field that is perpendicular to the page. So this means that there is a magnetic field either directed into the page as represented by x's or out of the page as represented by dots. But either way, there has to be a magnetic field because the question states so, but more importantly, there has to be a magnetic force. Remember that when you have a conductor carrying current in the presence of a magnetic field, that conductor will experience a magnetic force. We can label that F sub B. Now, in order for the conductor to move at constant velocity, then as noted, the magnetic force must have an equivalent magnitude to the gravitational force. So to summarize, the two forces acting on the conductor are the magnetic force and the gravitational force, but in order to move at constant velocity, the magnetic force must equal the gravitational force. We can move on to part B of the question, which asks us to find the magnitude and direction of the minimum magnetic field required to move the wire at constant speed. Well, fortunately, we can build off of our previous statement because we know that the magnetic force on a conductor is equal to the current in the conductor multiplied by the length of that conductor multiplied by the magnetic field strength multiplied by the sine of an angle, which we will talk about momentarily. Now, in fact, recall that the question stated that the magnetic field is perpendicular to the page. So here you have your conductor horizontally oriented, and then you also have a magnetic field. Let us assume for a moment that the magnetic field is directed out of the page. It may or may not be. We're going to figure that out in just a moment. But the point is that if it's out of the page or even into the page, then the angle between the magnetic field and the conductor would be 90 degrees. And so we can begin to solve for B. We will divide both sides of this equation by the term I L sine theta. Doing so cancels I L sine theta on the left hand side. And then we can simply plug in the known values. Everything was stated in the question here. And remember, the angle is 90 degrees. A couple of notes about the mass as well as length. The mass was given in grams. So take whatever grams you have and divide by a thousand to get it into kilograms. And then the length was given in centimeters. So take whatever length you have and divide that by 100. That will get your value in the standard unit of meters. So just make sure you do those conversions for mass and length. And when you plug this all in, you will get a magnetic field of 0.196. The standard unit of magnetic field is Tesla. So this would be the magnitude of the magnetic field. Let us check the direction. Now, you'll remember that we assumed that the magnetic field was directed out of the page. So we have these little dots representing that. We also knew from the diagram that the current in the conductor was flowing to the left. So we'll label that accordingly. We might use the letter B as well to label the magnetic field. Now, we're going to have to use a right-hand rule to then figure out which direction our magnetic force would be acting. So what we'll do is we'll draw a picture representing that scenario using the right-hand rule. So when you do the right hand rule, what you do is you take, of course, your right hand and you align it so your thumb and your four fingers are kind of at like a 90 degree angle. And then your four fingers pointing straight out would represent the direction of the magnetic field, so right here. And then your thumb, your outstretched thumb, represents the direction of the current. Now we have the thumb pointing to the left because the current was going to the left. And then we've tried to draw the fingers pointing out of the page. Admittedly, this is not a very good drawing, but imagine that these fingers are pointing out of the page at you. We've labeled the palm of the hand just to get the right orientation down. And actually look at that palm for a moment. You'll notice that that palm would naturally be pointing upward. 
that upward direction that the palm is sort of pushing towards, that is the direction of the magnetic force. So indeed, with our assumption that the magnetic field was going out of the page, that would yield a magnetic force pointing upward. Remember, we wanted the magnetic force pointing upward in order to balance out the gravitational force. So indeed, we have the magnitude of 0.196 Tesla, and then the direction would be the magnetic field is directed out of the page. So with that answered, we can move on to part C. This one's not a calculation, back to sort of a conceptual point. It asks in part C, what happens if the magnetic field exceeds this minimum value? Now remember, we got a magnetic field of 0.196 Tesla directed upward. Now, this question is assuming or sort of asking us what happens if that magnetic force is larger than the gravitational force. We'll exaggerate it here a little bit. Now, of course, if that were true, there would be a net force acting upward on that conductor. And if there's a net force acting upward on the conductor, then the conductor is going to accelerate upward. So the correct answer to part C is that the conductor would accelerate upward if the magnetic field exceeded the 0.196 Tesla. And just a note that the symbol here for magnetic field should have been B, not F sub B. So small correction there, but indeed the conductor would accelerate upward.